In this video, I'm going to make some pumpkin pie with my reflector oven next to the fire. If you're interested, keep watching. So, of course, this is going to be a low carb version of a pumpkin pie, and it's actually a very, very simple recipe to make. Uh, it uses ingredients you likely already have if you're on the ketogenic diet. Only difference is I'm going to be preparing it in the wood and I'm going to be using my reflector oven to prepare the meal. So, what I'll do now is take you down to my prep surface and I'll show you the ingredients. We'll start putting it together and we'll get it next to the fire. All right, so actually the first thing in, in preparing the, the pumpkin pie is I have to make the crust because the crust has to be prepared and baked and then allowed to cool before I put the filling in it. So it's a bit of a process to get through this, but uh, not too bad, not too bad at all. So, okay, what I'm going to be used is my baking dish today is the pot or the pan that comes with the 12 centimeter zebra. So you'll know it's just over four inches in diameter. This recipe, and I, of course, I will give you all the ingredients and the measurements and I'll put the macros for it as well down in the video description. But this recipe is sized for a four inch pie pan. Now, I did use one of these trying this recipe out when I was experimenting, and you can use these disposable small pie plates if you want. Uh, they'll work. The only problem is the, there is a bit too much of the crust for this and definitely too much of the filling. So what I ended up doing was uh, uh, putting some in another pan without a crust and uh, cooking it separate, almost like a little pudding. It worked, but we won't be using that today. I just wanted to show that as an option. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is actually melt some butter. Now, I'm going to be melting two tablespoons of butter I brought from home right in my little pan so I can just put it right in the fire, let it melt because that's going to uh, go into the rest of our ingredients. So I'll just put that right in the heat over here in my fire and let that start melting while I get the rest of the ingredients out. So this is my crust mixture. I will read the ingredients to you, but once again, I'll be putting it in the video description below. So in this bag, prepared at home before I came out, is one half cup of almond flour, one quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum, that's the binder that holds it all together, two tablespoons of monk fruit blend for my sweetener, you could use stevia or whatever else you want, two tablespoons of butter, which I'll be mixing into this in a moment. Again, I could use ghee or olive oil or just about any other type of fat. It would work for this. And as I mentioned, you do need a four inch pie plate. So let's get this into my bowl. All right, so there is the dry ingredients. I'm just going to create a little well in the center. Uh, again, this is just waiting a second now on the oil or the butter to melt. That will take a second. When that's melted, I'll come back and we'll go on from there. All right, it doesn't take long. Be careful when you do this that you don't burn your butter. Let's pour the two tablespoons of melted butter in. Now that does leave my pan a little greasy from the butter, which is a good thing because I was going to have to oil the edges of it anyway. But now let's get this mixed through. Hopefully you're hearing me over the wind. I notice it's picking up here. And all I'm doing now is incorporating the butter through the almond flour mixture. And what I'm looking to turn out here in a second is a ball of dough that I can pick up with my hands. Take my glove off. And today it would appear that I may end up having to add a little bit more fat to this. It's starting to come together now. If when you go to pick it up in your hands and make a ball out of it, if it doesn't stick together, then just add a little bit more butter, oil, whatever you have. That's not looking too bad. Let's see what happens when I go to pick it up. Will it hold together? Ah, it could be a little bit better. So, you know, I think I will add just a little bit of oil to this. Maybe I added a little bit more almond flour than I realized. I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of oil. Mix that around and see what happens. Oh yeah, see that? Yeah, much better now. That will work. Something tells me it was a little, added a little bit more almond flour into the bag. A little bit more than the cup that I should have added. But that's much better. All right. Now where is my bowl? It should be ready. 
that's my pie plate. All right, let's start getting this in. Now you don't have to pick this up and create a ball. That's really just to see if it's gonna to hold together. You can go pour it right in to the bowl and form the crust right in. When I say bowl, I'm talking about the one that comes with the 12 centimeters zebra, but into your pie pan, whatever that is, pie plate. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just pressing it down and forcing it to go into the corners and work its way up the side. I'll show you as I do this or when I get close to being finished. Try to get it even. I mean, you know, it's not a, an exact science, but you should be able to get up most of the way up the sides of the four, cent, uh, four inch pie plate. Like I mentioned, this is slightly bigger than four inch. There, okay, that looks pretty good. So there is my crust all ready to go in the reflector oven. You can see it's evenly distributed all the way around the sides of the pan here. It comes up most of the way to the top, but not all the way to the top, and that's just fine. Now, my next step is to get the fire built back up again and get the reflector oven in front of it, and then we'll put this on to bake. All right, so I know that this is not going to be the best angle or camera angle for you to see what's taking place, but I wanted to show you be putting the reflector oven in front of the fire with the pie shell in, and then I'll reposition the camera so you can get a better idea of what's taking place inside the reflector oven as it bakes. So I have done some videos using my reflector oven before. A little bit of dust in there. I will uh, provide links at the end if you're interested or you can just take a look through my channel and, and see how reflector ovens work. They're one of those great inventions that work so well for baking that you can do just about anything you want next to an open fire. Now, I will put the pie in. I do have to balance it as I do this. And I have a couple of logs here that are going to allow me to uh, get this as close to the fire as I can and at the right angle. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. Think I'm close enough? Yeah, you don't want to be too close to the fire. You just want to be, you don't have to be. It's not the flame that's going to do the baking. It's radiant heat from the fire. And very quickly, it'll go up 350 or 400 degrees in here. One trick with the fire is try to buy it, build it kind of tall. I built a little bit of log cabin there just because of the splits I have. But if I would built a teepee, I would have created a taller fire and more uh, radiant heat would have come into the reflector oven. So let me reposition the camera and I'll show you what's taking place inside. All right, two things are working against me to give you a better picture. One, of course, I've got the flame and the smoke directly in line with the camera. I was trying to find a good angle so you could see what was going on inside. Let's see if I can get a little closer but still not much clearer. The other thing is the sun. The sun is behind the reflector oven, so inside is shadowed. So you're not gonna get a true picture, or you're not gonna get as clear a picture as I would like to give you. So the only thing left to do now is just to wait. Now, you've got to keep an eye on the baking. There are no uh, timers like you would have on an oven at home. There are no temperature gauges. So what I'm looking for is to see browning around the edges and in the plate, uh, because of course it's gonna be heated from all the way around. And once I see some browning take place, it likely is as done as you want it to. There's no specific test to for doneness on this, but uh, if I see the browning, I know that it's been in there long enough, and then I'll take it out and let it cool down. Now, I could get on to the next step of uh, preparing the filling, but to be honest, I'm going to keep my eye on this first because I've made the mistake of leaving it in here too long and then it's something that was darker than I wanted. So what I'll do that now is I'll bring you back when I feel this is ready to take off the fire so you can see what it looks like. Okay, like I said, it doesn't take very long for this to cook and you have to keep your eye on it. By the way, the handle on the back of the reflector oven stays nice and cold, but everything inside is going to be very, very hot. You really do need to have a leather glove for this and somewhere to put it. So I need another leather glove to put it on. Uh, I probably could have taken it off a minute or so sooner. Let me get the other leather glove on and I'll show you what I have. It's not overdone, but it was close, okay? So you can see it browned in the center, browned around the edges, especially where it got thin. So that's not uncommon. Ooh, that is hot. Okay, there's nothing to do now with the pie until that cools down and uh, then I'll get the filling on we'll put it back in the reflector oven. But my 
pie crust. Yep, yeah, nice and cool. Didn't take long out here in the woods for that to cool down. So let's prepare the filling for the pie. So the filling starts with pumpkin, obviously. I have four ounces of pumpkin here, about a half cup. And that's what I've calculated will work well for this pie shell, especially when you add the other ingredients in, as you'll see. So what are the other ingredients I'm adding to the pumpkin? Believe it or not, cream, a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. So there's my heavy whipping cream and one whole egg. All right, there is my egg. Now I'll start the incorporation of these things together before I add the next ingredient. And the next two ingredients, I guess. Okay, that's starting to go together. It's not as together as I would like it or as it needs to be, but we'll keep going with this. So the next ingredient, two tablespoons of your preferred no calorie, no carb sweetener. So for me, it's the monk fruit blend. That's going in and I may as well put in my spices. So what do you put in a pumpkin pie? Pumpkin pie spices. You can buy prepared pumpkin pie spices if you want, or you can do what I did, which is to mix them up at home to your own liking. And the major ingredients are cinnamon, nutmeg and cloves. And then if you want to add some ginger and some allspice, you can do that. Now you're only going to put in a tablespoon. So I don't want to put in too much here. Maybe just a little bit more there. Let's get those things all mixed through. All right, that's starting to look good. It's all Becoming very consistent in color, fairly thick. So really, this is not a lot different than a regular pumpkin pie mixture would be, with the exception of the fact that I'm not using actual sugar. I'm using my sweetener for this. Otherwise, it would be end up being pretty much the same. All right, let's get the pie shell filled. None too much. It's going to be just enough for this pie shell. And once again, that's because the I elected to use the, the pan from the 12 centimeter zebra and it being a little bit bigger than four inches, it means it's going to spread these ingredients out a little bit further. Oh, that tastes good. Okay, now I have to get the fire built back up so that I can put the reflector oven in front of the fire and this in front of the frictor oven, and that's when I'll bring it back. All right, so my fire is starting to return to a good height for use with the reflector oven. Now all I have to do is put the reflector oven in front of it with the pumpkin pie in it, and then keep an eye on it. So, see if I can do this without dumping it. Get it in close enough and level enough. Oh, that's good, right there, yep. Perfect, okay. I know you can, again, you can't see anything from this angle, but I will reposition the camera in a few minutes time so that you can see what's taking place inside the reflector oven. So once again, I'm trying to give you an image inside of the reflector oven, but the sun is working against me, and even more so now because the sun is starting to settle down some. But what I can see from here that may not be shown up on the camera is that the filling is getting darker, uh, which is what I want to see. Uh, the edges of the crust, which are just above the top of the filling, are a little browner. Uh, that's not the end of the world, you know. It's, it's hard not to burn the crust when you're doing this. The rest of the crust, of course, will be fine because the pie filling is protecting it. So how long has it been in? How long does it take? Well, the, again, this, when you're cooking with a fire, is one of those things that's hard to judge. Uh, I will give you the recipe. If you were doing this at home, you'd be doing it in a 350-degree oven for quite some time. I did it at home just to experiment before coming out to the woods and it took about 40 minutes for this to cook and that was using one of those small aluminum foil pans 
This, I'm not, don't think it'll take 40 minutes, but the trick is, is to make sure it's done without being burnt. So how will I know when it's done? Well, it's no, no different really than cooking any other pumpkin pie at home. When I think it might be done, I'll take it off of the fire and I'll just push a knife into the center. If the knife comes out cleanly and there's just an indentation left behind, then the pie is done. Of course, I will have to wait for it to cool down before I can eat it, but uh, when I think it's done, we'll take it off, we'll take, we'll look at it, and uh, then we'll wait for it to cool. You know, there is no rushing a pumpkin pie. You can make your oven as hot as you want, and all you'll end up doing is burning it. But I think we're pretty close. I checked it a minute ago. It was still slightly soft in the center, but I think it was close enough that uh, as it sits to cool, it will thicken up as well. All right, let's get this uh, pumpkin off. I'll show you what it looks like now. Or this pumpkin pie, sorry. Oh, it's just a bubbling too. Woo, yeah. I'm getting browning around the top of the pumpkin. Fat that's in the uh, uh, crust is all bubbling up and it uh, came out clean. So yeah, it is done actually. Okay. We have to let that cool before we can enjoy it. And that's gonna take a few minutes, but I do have another chore I'm doing here anyway, so it won't be too long and I'll be bringing you back and we'll do a taste test on our pumpkin pie cooked in a reflector oven. Okay, how hungry am I? This is still warm. I still have to hold it with my glove, but I think it's cool enough for us to at least do the taste test on it. So what I'm going to do is I'll bring you in and, or bring this up to you so that you can see how the pie turned out. It looks very much exactly what I expected it to look like, very much what you might expect from a pumpkin pie cooked at home in the oven. A little bit of browning, but let me show you and you'll understand what I'm saying. So you can see some browning around the top, which is what you would expect. Now my crust is a little browner around the outside than I would have liked to have seen, but I'm not disappointed with that because I know just under the surface it's going to be fine. And it is done in the middle, even if it is a little bit warm. Now, let's come back for the taste test. I think I'll use the fork end. Uh, yeah, all right. Oh yeah, it's cooked. First off, I'll just try a little bit of the filling. Wow. See if I can get a little filling and crust on the fork at the same time. Focusing in, good, okay. So you can see the crust, except for the outside. Oh no, maybe I'll turn it around. Maybe I can get you a better shot of that. Can you see the crust now? It actually turned out perfect inside. It was just the top edges where it uh, got a little browned and I knew that would happen anyway, but the pumpkin looks perfect. You know, I made one of these at um, Canadian Thanksgiving to have with our large family meal. And I made it uh, a low carb version. Everybody else was having a regular pumpkin pie. I was having one of these, but I cooked it at home at that point. I tried, had a few people try it and they said, you know, really, you really can't tell much of a difference between this and a regular pumpkin pie. The filling is identical with the exception of the, the no calorie sweetener that I'm using. The cry is there. The cry. The crust is a little different for the pie, but uh, not not unnatural. You know, it feels like it's it. It tastes like it should. It has the right texture. Look at that steamy piece. Mmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That that that's turned out spot on. That's exactly what I was looking for. Took a little while, it does, but if you, you're gonna be at your site all day and you've got a reflective oven. Now, I could have cooked this in any number of other devices, I guess, inside of a bush pot, raised up off of the level, put some coals on it, or in, in my 14 centimeter zebra, I could have used the same pan inside the 14 centimeter zebra. It would have fit in nicely, packed coals all over it. If there's any number of ways I could have, do, could have made this pie, but I wanted to share it done with the reflector oven. Okay, if you have any questions about my pumpkin pie cooked with a reflector oven, any comments, any suggestions, please put them all in the comments section below. 
But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.